How do we give you a good enduro for the light category? Well, we'll put it at Buckmore Park. It's very, very close in qualifying. Less than a tenth of a second between the top four here and some very exciting drivers to talk about here, Spanners. We're yeah. going to have some really exciting racing. Yeah, very exciting. I'm sat here with uh, Boyd Wayne Jr. Um, second place from 22nd last time. What, what are you doing differently? Um, nothing much different. It's just I'm getting more confident as time goes on. It's helping me improve my driving. I get more confident. Just everything's coming together really nicely and I'm enjoying the ride. Do you think it's track specific, something about this track that you're enjoying a lot? Um, I've always had a liking to Buckmore, but I'm pretty sure everyone else likes it as well. Can you, can you make that stick? Can you convert that second place? No promises, but I'll try my best. We wanted promises. Come on. Good luck. Well done. Jake, who have you got over there? Well, great to see Boyd Wayne Jr. further forward. How about Andy O'Neill having a great performance? Andy, let's have a quick chat because this is your best performance by far in the Enduros. In the sprints, you've been right at the front. In Enduros, it's been a real struggle. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a couple of bad rounds. Um, I'm glad I'm up here today. At least I can contend for the win. I've got Jack right behind me in fifth, so that should be a good start. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to actually competing for it for once. So, yeah, looking forward to it. The experience of Butmore Park really seems to be counting. You know how to win here, so this could be an interesting battle. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've never really liked this track that much. I mean, I was quite looking forward to it today, to be fair. I mean, I was down here on, on Friday uh, racing in the uh, pro carts I got here. Uh, just got used to the track again, so it's been over a year. Uh, but I think that's paid off a little bit. We'll, we'll see how the race goes. I'm carrying a little bit extra ballast, so we'll see what happens. Looking forward to seeing how you get on. Good luck. Today. Thank you. So, who's the pole sitter? Well, we have an amazing performance from Max O'Shaughnessy. You're on pole, only just. Yeah, it is very close. I mean, if I was maybe like half a metre slow, I could have been sixth, seventh or eighth place. It's definitely a really close field, so I might have to do a lot of defending today. Uh, you say that, but you've been very consistent in the races. You've been formidable in the championship. You've got to be riding high for this race. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Enduros is normally my better of the two. I feel like my consistency helps me out, which is why maybe I don't do so well in the heats. But yeah, I'm hoping to win today. Very modest. Max Ashanti, good luck in the race. Uh, he's, he's being very modest there, but he's been absolutely on fire this season. He has. I mean, he's trying to defend a championship. We've got to remember here this weekend, because it's so close in qualifying, we've got some top drivers down the order, the likes of Dante Dillon and Ben Leslie out of position. We'll have to keep an eye on those two 14-year-old whippersnappers, the likes of uh, Fraser Brunton and Josh Adams, the youngest man in the field. This is going to be a really hectic battle. The Daytona D-Max Championships 2018 comes to Butmore Park, the Garden of England, and it's the Light Enduros about to give us some fantastic entertainment. The top four in qualifying separated by less than a tenth of a second. We are in for an absolutely spectacular race here. 60 minutes around the Butmore Park circuit, about 75 to 80 laps and it's going to be very fast and very frenetic throughout the rundown of the grid on your screens in front of you now this is going to be tight because we've got so many drivers outside of their expected positions particularly the likes of Dante Dillon and Cameron Card. and we've got to keep an eye on those two teenagers who weigh nothing absolutely nothing Fraser Brunton and Josh Adams in 13th and 15th on the grid Boyd Wade Jr completely delighted to qualify in second place I'm really hoping he can convert that to a podium he was bouncing up and down over that. To be fair, Boyd Wayne Jr.'s progress over the course of this season has been stellar. He's really, really strong, and he's got this mentality now, which is just pure confidence. Here they he go, winding getting, up. Yep, lining up in their rows, seemingly starting to get themselves uh, into their stride now. This is, of course, at the end of this race, the halfway point in the championship of the 10 rounds. This is round five, so they need to make good use of this points opportunity. And for a couple of drivers, particularly Dante Dillon and Cameron Khan, this is a difficult one because they are both outside the top 10. They need to make good progress. They will want to push on through the mix. But for Max O'Shaughnessy at the front, alongside Boyd Wayne Jr., this is game on. The O'Neills are third and fourth. Harrison Pugh is in the mix there as well. Green flag will fly, and we're racing at Daytona once again for the D-Max here at Butmore Park as they go through first corner and into Henry's Bend. Is there going to be any fisticuffs? No, it's a clean start. It's always cleaner in the Enduro because they know they've got 60 minutes to race. You can't win it in the first lap, but you can definitely lose it. But up front, it is the champion, Max O'Shaughnessy, who leads the way initially. We've got somebody off into the barriers, though, up at turn one. So somebody has gone off there at turn one. Can't quite see who it is. So the leaders come through no problem at all. We've got yellow flags at that far side of the circuit. And I still can't quite make out who it is. So I think we're going to go potentially to full course yellows. Yes, we are yep. stationary yellows all the way around the circuit. So we are full course yellows because that car is in a dangerous position. And incredibly, 
The cars that have come through in the lead are the O'Neills. The O'Neills have come through first and second. And Boyd Wade Jr. has lost out, unfortunately. He's down in seventh or eighth place. Well, hang on, if that's the case, then oh, Max O'Shaughnessy has come through in first position. I didn't see him go by. That's why I panicked there for a minute, because I thought, where had Max O'Shaughnessy gone? <laughs> Up to fourth position, though, has come Gus Silvera. Now, Silvera's nice. made a cracking start and has got himself up into fourth place already. So he's going to be an interesting bet here. Has local knowledge of the circuit again, so he's one to keep an eye on. Pugh, Hampshire, Davis, Wayne Jr., Ireland, Shimardi, and then Fraser Brunton, well, just, who yeah. is basically looking uh, stronger and stronger every time he goes out. And this is going to be an interesting one because the O'Neills have already done the hard work they green thought they were flag. going to do. Green, green, green. Let's go racing. Of course, the race has been ticking down for a while. So now they've cleared the area. We are under greens. We don't need to wait for the line because we've got our own system here at D-Max. As soon as it's clear and Ooh. it's safe, we go green immediately. Well, so the please. battle for the victory here looks like it could end up potentially, if they get too close together, could be a bit of brotherly shove as they charge up towards Max O'Shaughnessy. Look at Cameron Carr just diving down the inside, trying to pick off places. Ooh. Dante Dillon was spun halfway around and managed to rescue it in the back. So they're really fighting hard in the midfield. And the man charging after him is the man who weighs three bags of sugar, the smallest driver in the field, Fraser Brunton, who has to carry his own body weight in lead to be legal to race in this championship. He is not quite the youngest man in the field, that's Josh Adams, but he's certainly the smallest man in the field. I'm wishing him well, but I'm also incredibly jealous of his young youth and just how much fun he's having. Fourth position is Gus Silvera. Contact Fifth between the O'Neills there a little bit. Jack giving a bit of a friendly nudge as they go back up towards turn one. Well, that's more strategic. They want to try and work their way past Max O'Shaughnessy. They are not strategically pushing each other physically along in their carts. Yeah, you'd be surprised. These two know each other quite well. They know that they want to try and get over past Max O'Shaughnessy. Wow. And the easiest way to do that is to basically give each other a little bit more momentum by just giving a gentle nudge forward. It happens a lot in karting and Davis is in 10th position at the moment. So a great little tussle in the early stages. And the top three are getting away. This is exactly what they planned. Now, it would not surprise me in the slightest, knowing the O'Neills, if Jack and Andy had swapped positions on purpose because they feel that Jack might have the better chance to go past O'Shaughnessy. And certainly Jack is all over the back of Max right now. So that would seem to make sense as Jack has another look towards Max O'Shaughnessy. You've got to be so careful through those first couple of corners. But if he finds a chance to come by, then there is going to be an interesting battle up front. You've got to remember still that both Jack and Andy are very, very unused to racing each other because, of course, they are normally on the same endurance team as teammates. So it's very difficult to interpret how they're going to continue to battle. They've not done this very much with each other on the same bit of racetrack. Remind Look at this! Here we go with the battle for the victory! As now we've got Max O'Shaughnessy down into third position. The O'Neills have found a way through. Jack O'Neill's through in front. Second through is Andy O'Neill. Max O'Shaughnessy down to third position, but he is not going to take this line down. So now this is going to be a good run for the two O'Neills out in front. First and second place as they continue to charge forward. Fourth position, Gus Silvera is going to charge after them as a result of this. So Silvera is closing up in fourth place. But Harrison Pugh is trying to come through on Gus Silvera. Silvera hangs on to fourth place. And up to sixth position, clo closing in on them, is Sam Hampshire. Well, it's definitely given Sam the opportunity to close up as well while they've been fighting over fourth and fifth. But well, Dante Dillon's moved his way forward. So Dillon is now, I think, that puts him into 11th position. So we'll double check as he comes through. Yes, he's in there behind Josh Davis and Toby Shimodi. As Andy O'Neill hangs on in front of Max O'Shaughnessy, who is not going through yet. Max is one of those drivers who likes to pick his moment. He's not going to go for the move. He's going to try and push Andy closer to Jack O'Neill up front. And then once they are on the back of him, he'll start to make his impression again. Andy O'Neill starting to take a slightly defensive line. Look how close they are going in towards turn eight and nine. And again, just that little nerf for momentum down the hill will get them a little bit faster. Look at this squabble in the mid-pack, led by young Fraser Brunton. We've got all sorts of top talented drivers in the mix there. Ben Leslie's trying to make his way up through the field in the middle of that squabble. He was at the front of that queue a short while ago. Yes, he has. There so Harrison Pugh yeah. is through in a fourth position past Gus Silvera. I'd say he went very wide on the entry into turn eight, which allowed him to do that move. So great racing there by Pugh. Yeah, he's one of those drivers who's very good on the undercut, to be fair. He's made it work well. We've got back markers already. Traffic is starting to cause a bit of an issue. And uh, that move from Harrison Pugh has brought Sam Hampshire right back onto the tail of this battle. 
and closing in on all of them is Cameron Khan. So fourth position is about to get particularly spicy. I think Hampshire's going to make a move here into turn three. This will be one worth watching. Uh, not quite close enough on this. Oh, no, oh he, he does! Is. Well, he didn't have any right from there, did he? Well, Gus Silvera was not prepared for it. And as the back marker lets them go, he manages to get back past, but then gets a little nudge. And he's trying to defend again round the outside. But there's contact there. There's Boyd contact Wayne still Jr. there. Is not letting Hampshire get through. Dives back for the inside at seven. That's such a brave move. That's Boyd Wade Jr. I think he's actually caught up to that battle and got past. Well, now Silvera tried to get back on the inside of Harrison Pugh to shake off the attentions of Sam Hampshire. And I think that's left him vulnerable to Hampshire. No, I was wrong. Sorry. So let's see how that's gone. Jack, Andy, and Max up front. But who's the squabble? Oh, look at it. It's now Sam Hampshire at the front of that little squabble. So Hampshire's now got a bit of an advantage over Khan. Well, that is uh, Harrison Pugh up front. Up the inside comes Hampshire to defend from Cameron Khan. Gus Silvera back on the inside of Khan. Khan gets the inside back for turn four to move to cover him. So it's Pugh, Hampshire, Khan, and then Gus Silvera. And they've got a slower car. He's going to be right on the racing line at that point. Goodness me, that was tight. Dear, oh dear. That was a very scary moment, to be fair, and he's very lucky, all three of them, in fact, Hampshire, Khan and Silvera, that they got away with that one. But what that's going to do is give Boyd Wayne Jr. another crap. So Silvera's really lost out out of that scrap. So let's have a look at the leaders as they come through. Second and third yep. place, still scrapping away. Andy O'Neill's got Max O'Shaughnessy right the way in there. And Max O'Shaughnessy looking more than ever like he's got a chance to close up on Andy O'Neill. The thing is, this strategy isn't working as Hampshire throws it up the inside of Pugh and gets the place. Oh no, that's the Khan. Yeah, I was going to say, Harrison Pugh's on his own in fourth place. So Khan is holding off sixth position, trying to get past Hampshire and not, it's not working. Silvera's still there in seventh place as they squabble. But these three squabbling together into turn one. And that's going to be Gus Silvera hung out to dry unless he can keep it to the inside line, which he does. And gets that sixth place back again on Cameron Khan. Now he's going to go look for fifth position on Hampshire. He makes it a late lunge to the inside. Has to hang back. Good work from Silvera, though. He's uh, made a decent overtaking move there on Cameron Khan, and that's a hard thing to establish in this championship. And here comes Point Wade Jr. Point Wade Jr. is up for a scrap. So he looks like he's going to be trying to make his own impression on it. So Boyd Wayne Jr. on the back of Gus Silvera. As How well. did he get up to the back of that group so quickly? Well, they've been squabbling away, those three. They've been changing positions but all still, the way. Boyd Wayne Jr. must have been uh, lapping very well to get onto the back of that pack. He's done very well considering where he's been. And he's still fighting hard. Oh, Meanwhile, Andy O'Neill could be in trouble here. Yeah, he's Max been held up in the in the traffic. And Max, Max yeah, Max O'Shaughnessy trying to come through. This is going to be tricky in the traffic. Oh, dear, oh, dear, the back marker they just lapped. Almost went into the back of O'Shaughnessy under brakes. Was particularly loud, and there's a shot. That was Silvera trying to lap a back marker, and he ended up nudging him out of the way. And that's really impeded Silvera. Now, the question is, is Silvera going to get a warning for that? Well, he's got Boyd Jr., uh, Boyd Wayne Jr. right on his tail now. He was about four or five cart lengths back, and now he's in a position to take a big lunge down into turn nine, and he's gone for it. But. Like I said, you have to take a lot of... I think he got him. It was a very close battle there, but I think Boyd Wayne Jr. just had enough to pull that move off. And as he comes up the hill, they're still scrabbling away, but crucially, Boyd Wayne Jr. is behind Gus Silvera. Yeah, we see it a lot. You, you lose a lot by going narrow into turn nine. You get ahead, but then you lose all your momentum. So here they come again. And that's Dante Dillon having made his way past Gus Silvera. So Dillon's through on Silvera. Now that's a big one. That's an important one as well. He makes his move on the back marker. The back marker not being particularly cooperative in moving aside there. Is that for position? I don't think it is. Dylan's having to go the long way round. Silvera nearly gets squeezed out. Well, I want to see who that is because I wonder if that's someone in the mix. That might even be Josh Davis, the 35, having caught up to them, actually. I thought it was a back marker, but that looks to me more like Josh Davis. The more I look at it, it is. It's Davis. So Gus Silvera has lost out to both Dylan and Davis. Really intense battle. No wonder he was so hesitant to give up the place. But Josh Davis is now in there with Dante Dillon, and they have caught up to the back of Boyd Wayne Jr. Jack O'Neill's gone now, and Max looks like he's getting impatient behind Andy O'Neill, still making sure that he follows a wide line going into turn nine, not wanting to lose time diving down the inside. But he's so close all the way down that downhill uh, left-right, right-left flick into turn nine. From his point of view, getting past 
Oh, he's got him! He has got him! We didn't see it from our position, unfortunately, but he has got him. We'll have to see that back on a replay, because I think one of them has got an onboard. So a very nice over overtaking move there from Max O'Shaughnessy, taking good advantage. And now coming straight back, Andy O'Neill going through into second position. Max O'Shaughnessy is going to have him on the undercut. Coming straight back through. He is going to keep it to the inside and there's nothing Andy O'Neill can do about it. Andy had to go very narrow to get that place back and Max could just roll back and keep it flat through turn four and take the place back. Well, what did we say? Within the next five minutes, he had to make that overtaking move because the gap is too big to work with Andy O'Neill to move further forward. It's up to 2.6. Max O'Shaughnessy is now going to have to work incredibly hard to up the tempo and charge after Jack O'Neill for the win. Meanwhile, we've still got this great battle, Boyd Wayne Jr., Josh Davis. Oh, we're going to spin. We're going to spin halfway up the straight from one of the uh, back markers. And that is cart number 20, I think. So if that is 20, then that is a slip up there for Dane Christensen. As the racing is continuing on, as Gus Silvera throws it up the inside of Boyd Wade Jr. And they bag wheels! Boyd Wade Jr. turns into Gus Silvera down that half straight to stop him coming through. He was getting very irritated. I guess he felt aggrieved there. Oh, look at this! Boyd Wade Jr. and Gus Silvera are having a wrestling match down the straight. This is crazy from these two as they continue to change bl trade blows every time Boyd Jr gets himself through, there's an opportunity for Gus Silvera to come back at him and they are still squabbling. This is amazing, Silvera now dives back on the inside of Boyd Wayne Jr. Boyd Wayne Jr. gets the undercut again, Silvera holds him off. What do you want to bet Boyd Wayne Jr. is going to make a move into turn nine on this lap? Well, these two are getting silly, it's going to end in fisticuffs at some point because these two are getting really too close together. It's very, very dangerous at the moment. Here comes Cameron Card lining up the man he grew up with at the Daytona Milton Keynes Race School. These two have been coming up through the world of uh, British karting together. They know each other very well. They know each other's tricks, so they will know exactly what to expect of the other. At Butmore Park, it's going to be slightly different because their knowledge of the circuit is not as uh, extensive as their back home at Daytona but it is a very interesting battle they've got coming up. We've still got traffic to deal with. There's Jack O'Neill. Where's Max O'Shaughnessy? Still within spinning distance. <laughs> He's going to change directions. You see him there having to switch directions to get past the back marker. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think the back marker knew which way Max was coming from, and Max didn't decide until very late. Oh, and Pugh's going to get held up by the traffic himself, and that's going to allow Khan to come through. Door open. Walk straight through it, Cameron. Beautifully done. Now Harrison's going to try and come back. Cameron defends the move to block to cover, and that's fourth place. He's got so much more momentum, though, going into turn four. I don't think he is. He's going to come back in on the inside. They're going to be side by side. Oh, it's not quite enough. Now, Khan had it on the exit, so uh, he obviously had the momentum. I'm not sure how legal it is to run around to the outside and then cut straight back across. I wonder if there's going to be a warning for that, maybe. I think the racetrack is the black bit with the white lines either side, isn't it? Snitches get stitches, Samson. Yeah. You best look out. <laughs> yes. Snitches end up in ditches, isn't it? Anyway. Here comes Harrison Pugh on Hughes. the back of Cameron Khan again. But look at the leaders. They're getting very tight in. O'Shaughnessy's tightened right up oh, wow. on Jack O'Neill. They're on top of each other now. Yep. Jack O'Neill struggling with the traffic. This time O'Shaughnessy's played a better hand of cards on Jack O'Neill in the traffic. Andy O'Neill's a long way back though. He's not going to be able to take advantage of this. Well O'Shaughnessy just needs to keep the rhythm flowing here to close up. Because that gap was two seconds. It's now down to less than a second. So this is going to be very tight between these two and they know it. Jack O'Neill trying to come past. I think that's Tansy Besson. Waves aside, O'Shaughnessy went with, and look, there's now just the car's length between them. Jack's we lost said momentum. this wasn't long. Sorry, Jack. Jack O'Neill and Max O'Shaughnessy almost side by side there as they come through off of turn four. Jack O'Neill's going to drift wide, O'Shaughnessy's going to line him up. Problem is, Jack lost a lot of momentum through turn one getting past that back marker, uh, but now there's no distance between them at all. Max hasn't been making moves into turn nine in this race so far. It wasn't somewhere he was attacking Andy O'Neill when he was stuck behind him. So I think we've got to look for a move in the technical top part of the circuit. That's where Max O'Shaughnessy is particularly strong. He's proved it so many times already, and he's all over the back of Jack O'Neill. Here we go, and he's going to dive up the inside into turn one. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Jack got really out of shape in turn one there, so he was unable to fight Jack's back. Jack's got, got a problem. problem. 
Ah. Jack's got a problem. He's coming in. Has he lost the throttle? Uh, do you know what it is? It, it looked really unstable a couple of laps back before that when he was getting past the back marker. And then he, he, looked, he looked to wiggle and get out of shape into turn one there as well. So Jack O'Neill. Kind of now I think Jack O'Neill is on the same lap. Yes, he is. He's on the lead lap. So Jack O'Neill has rejoined in 13th position. Well, no, it's 12th place, isn't it? Because Fraser Brunton is battling away. So Fraser Brunton has come through. Fraser Brunton having that terrific battle for 10th position. Jack O'Neill is just behind them. But have a look at Ben Ireland. He's really sizing up Fraser Brunton with Jack O'Neill, the former race leader, now tucked in behind them. Well, this should be juicy, seeing Jack work his way past these guys as they go uh, down towards what, turn seven, turn eight, turn nine. You'd imagine that when we come back into the technical section at the start finish straight next time, Jack will be well attacking them. Well, let's not forget that about five minutes ago, he was lapping these guys, and now he's fighting them for position. So, uh, oh, how the mighty fall. Well, let's see if they realize. Maybe they think he's still in the lead. And That's a good again. point, actually. They may think he's still in the lead and move over. There you go. Ben Island lets Jack O'Neill through. Does he even know that Jack O'Neill is in the lead of the race? Because he isn't. He is battling him for position. I think he's twigged, actually. He, so a lot of these drivers will have radios. So Ben Island will have been told, that's Jack O'Neill, and you are racing him for position. Meanwhile, Fraser Brunton, just in front of Jack O'Neill, now he doesn't have to move over and let him through. He can race him. Brennan getting a little bit sideways there going into turn nine, though. So I think Jack's going to have momentum. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jack pop up in front of him here. Well, what was set to be quite a nail-biting finish to this race has oh, suddenly no. dissipated. Yeah, he's taken both of them. Yeah, Jack O'Neill now up to 10th position in front of Fraser Brunton and Ben Ireland. So no problems there. But now they've left Josh Davis and Gus Silvera having an amazing squabble. Oh, they actually rub wheels. And you can see the smoke coming off the carts as they rub wheels there down to the braking zone for four. Gus Silvera again trying to get himself in the inside there. I'd keep your eye on turn nine now. So Silvera goes for it. No, he doesn't. I thought he was going to try and make that move up the inside. He decided better of it. Wow, this is not done yet. We've still got five minutes and there's a few battles that are going to go down to the finish line here. But he continues on. Oshonis has gone through, no problem. Oh, we got side by side. Davis and Silvera locked together as they go down the hill. Davis punts the side of Silvera. Silvera hangs onto the inside line. Davis comes back again. I'd oh imagine my Davis word. is going to be in the lead as they come back out. Still these two battle, Josh Davis and Gus Silvera. They will not leave each other alone. And they are stealing the show here. Max O'Shaughnessy out front is boring as far as they're concerned. So let's swap paint and go for some overtakes. <laughs> Great stuff between the two of them. They continue on as they come up the hill. Still at it, Gus Silvera looking for a way to come by. Plenty of curve as they come across the line once again. Davis moves to cover Silvera. He knows he's not going to find it easy to keep him back. Now he's going for the lap traffic. But he's not close enough, so Silvera tries again. This is great defence, but it's also great offence as they continue to battle away. As Ben Island, oh, oh Ben Island laps somebody. I think that's Tansy Besson and just uh, runs her off the road a little bit there, I have to say. So I think she might have a problem. She's putting her hands in the air. I wonder if that was an apology. Oh. Sorry, I should have <laughs> let you through. So a difficult problem there. Jack O'Neill has made a good fight back, to be fair, considering he had to swap carts when leading, or having just lost it, I should say. He has fought back to seventh place and gained some good points. Here comes the Josh Davis, Gus Silvera freight train again. As Max O'Shaughnessy crosses the line with less than two minutes to complete. Davis defends, Silvera comes in again, battling for position. Oh, Shaughnessy very nearly trips over the back marker there. So some good race driving, some good battles. But still, Silvera and Davis are squabbling away, and now Silvera is in front of Davis. So up the hill one last time, Max O'Shaughnessy has done it again in fight style. He takes the jagged flag and is victorious once more. Great job for O'Shaughnessy. Remember, he was as low as third at one point behind both the O'Neills. Yep, a great fight back from the champion, and that's why he's the number one. He had no idea how he got qualifying pole position, but a great victory for O'Shaughnessy nonetheless. And a great battle, fantastic racing. Second place for Andy O'Neill.
A third position for Cameron Khan with Harrison Pugh in fourth from Hampshire, Dylan, Jack O'Neill, Gus Silvera, Boyd Wayne Jr. and Josh Davis in front of Ben Ireland and young Josh Adams who did a great job there in 12th position. A fantastic run from Josh Adams. Apparently Archie Elliott is the youngest driver Oh, Archie track. Elliott's younger yeah, than Josh yeah, Adams. Fair enough, I do apologise. So uh, a lot of young guns this time. Clearly, Fraser Brunton started a trend at the start of the season and uh, all the young guns have brought their way through. But Josh Adams to 12th, not bad at all from him. Ben Leslie through to 13th position. Fraser Brunton did get going again, I should point that out. And he has managed to bring the cart home in 21st in the end after losing a lot of time. But what a shame. Jack O'Neill deciding to finish on a flourish with the fastest lap of the race on the last lap, 44.547. Well, that's Jack O'Neill for you. But the victory goes to Max O'Shaughnessy once again. Ladies and gentlemen, to Cameron Khan, Andy O'Neill, and your winner, Max O'Shaughnessy! I'm here with third place, Cameron Khan. <laughs> uh, the way you cut through the traffic is so important. You caught up with Harrison Pugh, and then you were able to take advantage of those back markers. Yeah, it was a good race. I started feeling it. I used to come here when I was a kid, so I guess I caught, got my memory back. And then once I got in the mood, and then I started chasing, and then I guess I just started coming through people. I enjoyed the race, really, but I wish I could have started a bit further up. That's the only thing. Physical, a, a physical race this one then? Yeah, it's quite, use your arms a lot because it's turn after turn so your arms do get a bit tired in it so yeah, it was a good race, I enjoyed it, everybody did alright. And the podium a good reward, well done, yeah. well done to Cameron Khan in third place and in second place, uh, second place we've got Team Andy here, the best of the O'Neill brothers clearly in second place, uh, good race today, uh, your qualifying helped you, put you in good stead for the race. A good, good race overall, good for points, uh, it might put me a fourth or third, I'm not sure where, but um, it was just when I was behind Max, he was sort of pushing me down the straight, so it was sort of keeping us with Jack. But as soon as he got by, it was, it was the right thing for him to do because he was a really good battle with this guy, Max, as well. Uh, we saw you and your brother physically pushing each other. Is that deliberate? I don't think I ever pushed Jack at all. I think I pushed him into the corner to get him behind the first place, but otherwise, I don't think I've, I'd never pushed him. I know Jack was pushing me early on, and at that point, I think he realised that he had he had the pace to, to take the lead, so he definitely did the right thing again, go to the inside, just made it easy for him. Second place, Andy O'Neill, thank you very much. Let's get a word with our race winner. Max, obviously, a little bit of luck today, but the amount of times you keep pulling off these performances, luck's not really an issue, is it? Well, I have to say, I, I have to say, I think that second place was probably going to be for me. Maybe first, obviously, because I could see after I'd gotten past Andy, I was catching up to Jack. But then again, I don't know if I was catching up to him because obviously he is, his problem was worse than him. But yeah, he, there was definitely um, some luck to get the win today. But I mean consistency uh, just getting on the podium for each round of the championship is going to help me out in the end and usually the top step of the podium well hopefully so the more wins you can get the better it definitely helps uh, helps me boost up and gives me a nice catch fence um, for the rest of the season thank you then race winner max o'shaughnessy He's looking good, isn't he? He's looking unstoppable. Yeah, it's a good point in the season, but that's the first half over. There's another half to go. Some big tracks coming, and it's going to be a real challenge. DaytonaMax.co.uk if you want to get your place on the grid in any of our categories, light, inter, or heavy enduros, and the heats are going to be just as exciting to watch.